Hi everyone, uh, my name is Eric. Um, today we'll take a look at the Optisys uh, webinar all together. Thanks all for your attendance. Um, uh, it's very nice to see that a lot of people actually responded to that webinar. Uh, don't worry, today we'll take a look at a lot of very nice things that coming up in Optisys um, that you'll be able to use as soon as you have the new version. I do see all the participants and the attendees uh, logging in, so thanks a lot once again to be in such a large number uh, meeting today. And uh, of course, uh, most of you know me or we speak together or most of you we met, I think. Um, and it's nice to see that there is everyone from all over the country, from BC to uh, the Maritimes. So uh, yes, today we'll take a look at the new features that we'll have in Optisys. Please understand that this webinar is really a, a way for me to show you the, the nice features. We do have, however, a question section in your GoToMeeting that we'll be able to talk about, so you'll be able to ask your questions. And at the end, we'll have a question uh, time uh, to actually speak about all the questions that we might have the time to answer during the webinar or that you want to add to what we're going to talk today about. Uh, today, I'll be uh, assisted by my colleague, Marc-André. Uh, Marc-André, are you there? Hi, how's it going? Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Marc-André will be the one managing the uh, the questions throughout the webinar and maybe sometimes interrupting me <laughs> to ask some of your questions that you might want to, um, to have answers on. So I see that a lot of people are still logging in right now. Uh, we're on the spot, thing, I think, to, to start. So let me uh, just introduce uh, the way it's going to work. So uh, here for the uh, webinar itself, um, it will be recorded. So don't worry if you should have to walk out for a coffee or something. I know it's still early in some provinces now. Uh, you'll be able to just uh, watch it again later on. And of course, you'll be able to share it with your team when uh, obviously everyone will be back at work. I know that's not the case for everyone right now uh, to have everyone available at the moment to see it. So you'll be able to share it later on if needed when they'll be back. So they'll see all the nice features that we added to Optisys, just like what you see today. Uh, this is the, uh, the place in the uh, webinar control panel where you'll be able to ask all your questions. Uh, so yes, because we're so many right now, we need to mute our attendees uh, because there will be too much background noise if you actually open a mic for everyone. Um, but we'll be able to actually ask the questions using it. Then for the uh, uh, question period at the end, I'll show you how to be able to raise your hand and mention that you have a question so everybody can see it and I'll be able to answer that question and unmute you. So now let's start uh, by a short poll because we need to know more about you guys. So um, Marc-André, can you actually start it for everyone, please? Very good. So I'll ask everyone to answer uh, because we'll wait for everyone to answer before we go on with the, um, the webinar. So please answer all that question about how long have you been using Optisys? Okay, I see all the incidents coming in. Perfect, so we've got 80% 80, 80 of you that answered, so we'll uh, just give it a couple more seconds. Uh, it, it's park, park ball, I mean, uh, uh, you don't have to actually answer exactly the number of years that you know, This is just give me a ballpark figure, please. Perfect, so uh, I think that's everyone. Okay, very good. So uh, yes, so we have a lot of everything right now. So can you show us the result, please, Marc-André? Very good, so it's, um, well, about a quarter of you is less than a year. So that means that you're still, um, learning curve in a way, uh, even if you are very good at it. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you'll be able to find a lot of nice features in that uh, demo today, in that webinar. And even some of you have been using Optisys for more than 10 years. So you guys are, of course, the um, super users of Optisys. And I'm sure that you're going to appreciate uh, the features that you're going to see today, because some of you actually asked for those um, uh, features to be uh, added to Optisys through the years. So I think we have another one, uh, McCountry, in terms of questions for all our attendees. All right, so here's the second question on screen. Ah, 
do you know which version you're using? So of course, this whole webinar is about the new version, which is 42. Well, normally we should, you should be able to uh, answer if you're in 41 or even maybe 42, because that's what's open already for everyone to download, or maybe in the earlier version. Of course, if you're in the earlier version, uh, you'll be very surprised with what had been added throughout the system at the time, because every update of Optisys means a lot of nice little features that you'll be able to use every day. So once again, just please answer, everyone answer the questions so we can move on and show you the results. It could be interesting. So, Perfect. So I yeah. think that's good. We've got uh, all the answers. I'll share this on the screen. Uh, very good. So yes, most of you are in version 41, which is logical because we just just allowed you to actually uh, download the new version. So, uh, but some of you, actually one fifth of you, actually have the V42. So then you'll be able to use all the features I'm going to show you right away, or at least uh, configure it right away uh, in your Optisys. And for the one of you who don't know, uh, just take a look at the bottom of your screen in Optisys, and you'll be able to see the version that you are. Uh, however whatever the version you are right now, if you actually do the update, it will always update you to the latest version. Uh, regarding that question, um, there is a little pause right now on the, on the uh, what we call the gate latest on uh, downloading Optisys uh, version 42. Uh, so it should be available again next week. Uh, it's just that there's a lot, it was a lot of answer at once, and we had a little glitch with very old computers. So we're fixing it right now. We already found a fix. It's just a matter of, um, putting it available for you guys. So from Monday, you'll be able to, or uh, maybe let's say uh, to be safe, let's say Monday, you'll be able to download the new version of V42. And yes, it will be uh, compatible with Windows 7 uh, if you still have those very old computers. However, I strongly suggest um, to actually update your Windows 7, Windows Vistas, and even if you still have Windows XP computers, to update to Windows 10, uh, not only for Optus's sake, but also as security, because of this, uh, Windows 7 and all previous version of Optus's are no longer supported by Microsoft, so there's a big security breach there that could happen. Thank you very much, everyone. So today we'll take a look at uh, a lot of things that we added on. So going through the text messages, there's a lot of new features on the exam. If you want to look at the exam, works with the exam in Optisys, we call it the EMR. Um, external equipment, we added a lot of those in Optisys. Uh, there is also enhancement in agenda, in the patient file, in the prescription window, the Rx, and some other ones that will be very nice for you to know. So let me uh, switch directly to Optisys. Oops, sorry, let's show you the screen. So you recognize our little friend here, uh, Optisys. So yes, there's a lot going on here. The first one that I want really want to show you as soon as we can is what we call the SMS feature. So in Vision 42, you'll have your little uh, SMS icon. And that SMS icon, by the way, will stay there all the time that you're in Optisys. It's a brand new feature, and we want to make it available at any point. So even if you're not in the patient file, you'll be able to see it. But however, if you are in the patient file, and of course the patient have a cell phone number, just click on that little icon on the top, and you'll be able to um, enter the header, the folder that you predefined in Optisys. Don't forget that you have a version history document uh, that actually came with the website, uh, the email that we gave you to allow you to link to that webinar. So the same email will allow you to download that Optisys history. And then it will show you how to uh, register with our third party to be able to send SMS. By the way, that third party is called Twilio. It's spelled T-W-I-L-I-O. Um, you can go on the Twilio.com website, register there, and you'll be able to actually, uh, um, once you have the registration, have all the credentials to configure in Optisys. And we do have very easy to understand, very um, nice videos for you to look at so you can configure it yourself. I don't think there's any point for me to show it right now because you'll still have to take a look at the videos anyway because it's really a step-by-step -step guide. So uh, I really wanted to, to show you that once we have that set up, then we'll be able to send SMS multiple ways. So yes, we'll be able just to send a simple SMS to the patient, uh, uh, whatever we want, so thanks for something, whatever we want to send it. We want to send to Paul the fact that he forgot his hat in the office. Uh, 
We want to actually just inform the patient if they have an emergency appointment uh, about uh, covering their uh, face with a mask, uh, maybe um, distances and so forth nowadays. So those SMS could be very practical to have a really instant communication with the patient without calling the patient if they're too busy. Uh, we also will be able to use subjects. So those subjects can be predefined in Autisys. Uh, you'll be able to find them in the admin section of Autis. We'll see that a bit later on. And then we'll be able to actually uh, put something here. So um, here we'll have thank you for your precious. And we can actually just finish or complete the text by hope they feel well. And then you'll see the actual preview of the whole message at the bottom. Uh, one of the, uh, well, the preview is nice to know just to see how it's going to look like on the phone of a patient, but also it's going to actually serve you to know if you're sending more than the limit of 160 characters, because yes, a text message or SMS is limited to 160 characters. So if you actually go beyond that 160 characters, it will actually switch to two SMS invoices, and you'll be able to see it directly from here. Uh, so of course, your account will be depleted from two SMS, even if you send it only once to patients. Um, there's no questions yet on the uh, questions pad, uh, Marc-André? There's no question yet, but okay. don't be shy. Ask us any question and we'll, uh, we'll reply. Yes, please. And everybody will be able to benefit from those questions. Uh, I'll, I'll, another little nice thing that we added here is that we'll be able to use a clipboard. So if you copy something from a, an exam, a Word document, from a note in Optisys, uh, you'll be able to actually to paste it in your text, um, so directly from here, or you'll be able to actually uh, copy the information from your text into somewhere else, if you want to be able to uh, put it somewhere else. However, you'll need to know that when you send a text over, everything will be recorded when it's sent by for a patient in the communication tab. So just like the emails that you've been using uh, for some time now, I'm sure the SMS will stay there. So if the patient says, oh, I didn't receive your text message, uh, well, then you'll be able to tell in Autosys if the text message were sent or not, or maybe to the wrong uh, cell phone number if that's the case sometimes because we have to rely on something uh, for this. It's also going to be something uh, that we'll be able to use in the agenda. So we made something specific for the appointment confirmation. So remember in Optisys when we right click on appointment, I'm sure that you all saw or at least me use the confirm appointment by, appointment by email. We have the same principle here for the uh, text message or SMS as we call it in Optisys. Um, by the way, for the people who doesn't know, SMS stands for a short message system, which is a real technical term for a text message. Because well, between you and me, text message does all, doesn't only carry text, it carries other things. So that's why we call it for a short message system. Uh, yes, and sorry, we'll be able to click on that new feature in the agenda and automatically up to will put the subject to appointment confirmation and actually enter the time and date for the appointment. So what it's going to do is at the end it will say uh, uh, whatever name of the office is, which is like for a software solution, appointment confirmation for that date and that time. If you need contact, please call. And then that could be the, the footer. If I remove my footer and a header, I just keep the uh, message and the subject that will be combined together. So it's always better to keep both the header and the footer for most of our text messages, of course. Uh, and by the way, as you see here, we can always modify the cell phone. So if the cell phone number in the file is wrong, but I want to send the SMS and I'm on the phone right with the patient and they give us their cell phone number, don't be shy. Just change your cell phone here. However, I strongly recommend to change also the cell phone into the file later on. But you don't have to do that before you send out the email. Perfect. We do have a question that came in. What is the cost per SMS? Ah, very good question. So going, of course, on the Twilio.com website, you'll have a lot more details of the different um, package that they have. But uh, in um, the big picture, it's about 0.1, well, 0 0.07 cent per SMS. So it's less than 0.1 cent per SMS. So it's quite pretty cheap. So you can imagine that if you put like a $20 US in it, which I think is a minimal uh, minimum, it will actually uh, be a lot of SMS just to start. So yes, that's pretty cheap. However, uh, don't send SMS to all your patients because once again, the SMS is very practical for instant messaging, but 
don't overdo it because your patient might say, well, I'm, I'm reading my SMS all the time and I don't want to <laughs> have SMS from you every day. But I'm sure that you understand so, that. So I believe that, that um, um, $20 US gives you 14,000 SMSs. Wow. You're good, uh, Marc andre So as you see, you, you, that will actually run for a very long time <laughs> unless you go a bit crazy with your SMS. Uh, thank you, Marc andre So yes, yeah, so once you click on send, the SMS will be sent right away. There's no questions asked or anything like that. There's no other screen we have to type in. It's very easy and um, uh, very quick. Uh, and by the way, from the appointment for the patient, if you don't want to send an appointment confirmation SMS, just, just a simple SMS to say, don't forget uh, your no-show last time three times in a row, and I want to make sure that you'll be there. You can also send just a simple SMS from here also. So we kind of put it everywhere in the, in the system, so you always get access to sending an SMS very quickly from Optus. And yes, like I said previously, even if you're not in a patient file, at any point, and if it, actually even if you're not in the agenda at all, you're still going to have that SMS in here. So this one, however, won't be linked to the actual patient. So even if I actually type in the patient name in here, it will just send the SMS, but it will not link it in any communication of the patient. So it's just like a generic um, SMS you could send to an employee, to um, to somebody, a supplier, a rep, or something, if you wanted to, directly from Optisys. But they won't be recorded as such. But it's a nice little feature that we'll be able to use if you want to, without having to impact the patient file. So that's for the SMS on All the right. right. We, we do actually have another question here. Uh, can patients reply back? If so, where does it go? Very good question. So for the moment, the patient cannot reply back. It will actually, um, well, that's why I've put my footer to be, if you need to contact us, please call and then the phone number. And that's the best practice for, for the moment, because if the patient try to uh, reply back, they'll have an error saying that this uh, 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 account doesn't allow uh, replies. Uh, however, in the future, we're going to try to implement it. But for the first version of that SMS feature, we're going to just keep it as a send out only type of message. Does that answer the question? I hope that. Uh, any other questions, uh, Mark, in that thread? So far, so good. Very good. So um, now let me move on that we actually talked about the SMS. And like I was saying, don't forget to take a look at your version history document. We'll have the nice video link there it's for you to take a look on our YouTube channel. So you'll have all the details of how to register with Twilio and how to set up Optisys in the uh, default values. Now, I, uh, by seeing the, the names on the attendant, we know that a lot of you uses the EMR, the exam and Optisys. And we did actually um, uh, temper with that a little bit. Uh, you had you had requests, a lot of little features, and we try to add add them in, um, in the exam as much as we can. So I hope that we'll actually that we'll be very satisfied with those. I was because I think that will impact your exam uh, very quickly. Uh, so most of you know already, but some of you might not know. But in the exam at the moment, we actually have action buttons that we can use. So by example, if you wanted to export an Rx to the patient file, instead of right clicking, you can um, use a button for that. And that's been there since the version uh, 39, and along with some other import features and copy. Uh, however, we added some, some more. So the first one I want to show you is the copy group. So you know that before you had to right click on a field and do a copy group and select which group you wanted to copy over. Well, that's very nice. Uh, however, we can define now an action button that will allow you to specify which group you want to copy. So it's if it's always like 80% of the time the subjective that you want to copy in your final Rx, you can define your own action button and it will actually do that directly. So as you see, the values are the same from my subjective to my final. So that's an easy quick. And you don't, you're not limited to one button, by the way. You can actually have one button to copy the subjective, another button to copy the cyclo, the uh, previous Rx, whatever you want. And that could be not only sent to the final Rx, but any prescriptions where you have a group. So that's one of the uh, buttons that we can do, which is called copy a group. We have another one that actually going to print the Rx. So now that we have a prescription, uh, we'll be able to actually click on the um, uh, a button that will actually, of course, save the exam, 
because as before, before uh, putting out an Rx, the exam needs to be saved. And then you'll be able to print out the actual Rx with the same option that you had in the patient file. So if you click on an optometrist Rx, which is normally the case, it opens on my other screen, but let me show you. So it's the same one that you've been using for some time um, that you'll be able to print directly from the exam. So without having to minimize, go into the patient file, click on print. So if you, in your exam room, you're either printing in your own, on your own printer or printing it from the exam room on the reception computer, uh, printer, sorry. Uh, now you'll be able to do it directly here. You don't have to ask anybody to do it or to go into patient file yourself. And for the people who sign their Rx directly from the exam, uh, you'll also be able to have a button that will actually automatically sign the Rx for you. But if people doesn't know, and I think that there's might be some of you that doesn't know, uh, the signature of the Rx is a way to digitally sign the Rx, meaning that, oops, sorry. Uh, meaning, oops, my caps lock is on. Meaning that the um, um, Rx, in a way, will have a val legal value in Optisys, uh, so we can reprint it anytime, and your signature will be there. But only you, as a doctor, will have a specific password, like I was just trying to do, <laughs> and um, that password will actually make sure that only the doctor have. Um, approve that uh, prescription for the patient to get. So it's not one of the uh, whatever prescription that people can do. It's really just an optometrist prescription, like a final Rx. So we have a button that will actually generate the Rx into the patient file and sign it. So it's going to be available at any point to print it again. So that's for our third button. So the first one, remember, was copy a group easily. The second one is to print an Rx directly from the exam. And the other one is to sign the Rx directly from the exam. And it doesn't stop there. <laughs> so here, uh, I have put it in the um, assessment window, but it could be anywhere. We have letter buttons. So yes, uh, if you're always using the same six or 10 referral letters for glaucoma, diabetes, TPAs, uh, reports, you'll be able to actually put a button and create an action button for that. So it's just a matter of clicking on it. And of course, the exam will be saved once again before it creates a letter. And then the letter will be generated with all the information from the patient file, just like before. Once again, instead of having to go into the um, uh, removing, well, getting out of the exam, closing the exam, adding an attachment, selecting much of an attachment, well, this button will do everything at once, as you see now. So it's very much more practical. And every little five seconds we can shave from our day to day is a big win at the end of the year, of course, as you all know. We do have a couple of questions, Eric. We've got, um, how do we get our signature into the system? Oh, very good uh, point. So in your user, so if I go back in my administration of Opticis, uh, it's always under application that I'll find my user list. And as the optometrist, uh, I'll be able to set myself with an electronic signature. So then you just have, well, if you have, already have one, you'll have to define that you enter your password again, but then you'll be able to load your signature and uh, modify your password or delete it or load it. So everyone can have their own signature when they digitally or electronically sign their Rx. And that's under admin, application, and users. Wonderful. We also have another question here. We, um, we have, can we see what print Rx looks like? Well, the print Rx, when we print the Rx, it's always going to show you a preview before it sends it out. So, yeah, so the print Rx will always show you a preview before you click on the, the print. So you're always going to see the Rx before you print it out. And we're going to see that a bit later, but we have a lot of new things coming on the Rx. But I'll keep that in the fridge for now. <laughs> Another question. All right. So, for, so uh, no, that's it for now. But for those of you who just joined, uh, you could always use the little question, uh, little arrow, and ask us a question. Exactly. And then, as you see, like how they can interrupt me and ask those questions. Uh, very good. So, um, again, on the um, exam, we also added oh, some. Oh, it just one little. Sorry about that. One little specification for the signed RX. There is no preview for the signed IRX. 
Uh, no, it does, sorry. Yes, you're right. It doesn't show the preview before it saves it, but it creates it in the patient file. So remember, the sign RX doesn't um, print it. So it's really the print that actually shows the preview before you print it out. But the sign RX doesn't print it. It only signs it. So it's going to stay into the patient file for you to either print it or to view whatever. But it really just signs the RX and generate the RX, of course. You're right. I'm not going to Sounds great. Um, there is um, an, there, I, I see some of you have uh, hands raised. There will be a period of question at the end, uh, but if you need a question uh, right now, you could always ask it using the little question with the arrow on it. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, because for now, that'd be a bit too quiet if we open the mic for everyone. Also, there's one more thing that we added in the exam, and it's what we call the normal values, or should I say, abnormal values. <laughs> so it's a way to identify very quickly values that either are out of range or doesn't make sense to you. So some of the values that we come up with the exam are defaulted or brought up from equipment in the office. And if you want to have a little um, a cue that that information is either wrong or it's out of range or that you have a special case on your hands, Optisys created uh, those little values. So in the design of the exam, you can actually set up a normal range for a value. So by the, in the optometry, uh, the tonometry, sorry, in the uh, in here, you can specify that between 10 and 20 is normal, but out of that 10 to 20 range, it will be abnormal. So then I create that example where I had a patient with a 21 pressure and a nine pressure on the other eyes. So they both appear in red telling me that this information is either wrong, so wrongly typed by a pretester or by ourselves, or um, the equipment that sent out the information actually was wrong, or the patient had very, very high or low pressures. But if I put the normal like 14 and uh, 14 value for the pressure, it appears normally in black. And you can do that for every numerical field, whatever it's an integer or a flow box. And it could be the same thing. So if you have patients, if you want to always be aware when you have a patient with very high or low powers, you'll be able to do the same thing in the previous Rx or subjective or order of fraction. So just to, to make the, the, the field come in red, red, sorry, when we have an abnormal value in it. Very good. Uh, I know that I won't have a lot of time, but uh, if you want to see how it works for the buttons and this, We'll take a look at it very quickly. So if we go to- We do, we do have a question in regards to that. Uh, will there be instructions as to how to add these amazing shortcut buttons to the exam? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm going there right now because uh, I, I know that a lot of you actually think that like, like a lot of values for the you uses the exam every day. So when you go in your designer, you select your section or your exam, depending if you have segmented your exam or not. And then you're gonna use that little action button in your toolbox. It's, it's easy, it's the, the last one in the list because it's the last toolbox, the tool that we added, uh, I think two versions ago. And when you add that to your exam, you'll create something like this. And then it's under content that you'll be able to specify what you want. So you can either actually enter text, so just say, this one will be a copy button, so you say copy from subjective, call it anytime, you, anything you want. You can also add an image like I did myself, which is like a little copy image in a way. And then you'll be able to specify which action you want the button to do. So the copy a group is a new one. The export and import were already there, uh, but the export and sign, export and print, and start the letters are also the other three that will be now available in version 32. So as you might imagine, this is the print, so that little printer with the RX sign on it. And this is the signature, which is a little RX with whatever signature that would be <laughs> on it. So those are default um, uh, images that we have on the buttons. So you'll be able to set them up with, of course, for the copy button, uh, which group it the belongs the button belongs. So this button belongs in the final RX because that's where we want to import the information to. And the copy to the group. So then you're actually going to specify that this is a subjective. So that's why I'm saying that you can have multiple buttons, one that will copy the subjective, one that will copy the order of fraction, maybe depending on what you need. So you can du duplicate that function over multiple groups. 
and it's uh, the same principle for the other ones while we define the groups that will either export and print or export and sign the Rx from. So if you really want it, you can export your subjective the same way, but I wouldn't recommend it, but that's always a possibility if that's something that you've been doing anyway, using the right click function. Uh, and by the way, it's about the same principle also for the letters. So let me go back in diagnosis where I put my, um, my letter buttons, because I think that those will be very nice for a lot of you you're using the, um, the buttons. And I think it's called the assessment. Uh, let me just check it very quick. I'm sorry for that. Uh, master problem and plan lists. Sorry, I have a lot of different to use. Let's go in our problem plan list where I create those uh, buttons. So once again, so it's the same button, action button that I've been using for the other ones. So here, just drag and drop your button here and define your content along with it. So here I've put actual names. So instead of having the same icon for all four, which is a bit uh, misleading, I added the text in it to identify which one does my referral letter number one, number two, number three, and we'll see that we can have any referral letters. And I'll be able to actually specify that my action is to start a letter, and then it will ask me which letter I want to start. And each button will have our main letters. And yes, if you don't define which letter you want to start from, it will just ask you which one you want to start. So if you have 30 of those letters, and I know that some of you does, um, you'll be able to, uh, you don't have to actually do 30 little buttons. <laughs> you'll be able just to select the uh, referral letter or whatever letter, exam letter that you want to create out of your exam that you're doing at the moment. Right. Any other questions in the uh, forum, Mark? So far, no questions. Excellent. So that means that we have great explanations. Uh, uh, then we have also the external equipment. So let me switch over to uh, my little uh, list here. So if on that list you recognize an equipment that either you have right now or you're considering, just know that in the version 42 of Optisys, that equipment will be directly linked with your exam. So whatever is the UVITS HNT1, the Rikert machine, so the OptiCheck plus uh, the 7, the 7CR, the 8555, the PD100, the ORA G3, or the Nidec RT6100, which is like a new version of the RT5100 uh, for Opter, uh, will be um, compatible with Optisys. So we'll be talking to the exam. By the way, the Nidec RT6100 is bidirectional. So you can import information from the machine, but also export to the machine. We also have a third-party connection, which is iConnects. So if you use that third party, uh, you'll be able to connect with your database in Optisys. I'll just leave it there for just a couple of seconds for people to take note of. Uh, if you recognize, if you know that you have a Riker machine but don't know exactly which one, just take note of the list. Um, and by the way, you have the same list in your version history document that came with the email. Very good. So once again, if you need more information, so if you need to synchronize those machines with Optisys, please call us at the support, leave us an email, and we'll be more than happy to call you back and set that up with you. So of course, we'll need the equipment to be physically connected to your network or your computer, depending on the equipment, and then we'll be able to set it up so it talks together. Perfect. Going back in Optisys. So, um, so just to let you see where we're at at the moment. So we've took a look at the SMS, the exam, uh, the equipment. So now we'll take a look at the agenda, the patient file, the Rx, and little other places where we made enhancement in Optus's uh, version 32. So let's take a look at the agenda. You know, it's something that we use every day uh, very often. So that's something that has an impact on everyone when we change some things. So we try not to change it too drastically. So one of the things that we uh, we added is that when we're going to cancel a uh, type of multi, um, well, maybe I should show you because nobody, I don't think that everyone knows about it. So I noticed this, there is a way to create multiple appointments. So those multiple appointments uh, can actually run for a month, but also can run for 2,000 years if you wanted to. It just depends on the date that you put in. 
uh, can be um, selected for a specific day. So then I'm trying to do that on the Thursdays. Can run for 15 minutes. Or if you if you want to book to block all your lunches time, could be an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how long you take your lunch. And I can define it the way I want it to. So that will run for every Thursday for a month from 11 uh, 10:45 to 11 o'clock. So it will create little things. But if you go to the next week, I'll have it. Next week afterwards, I'll have it. I'll have it for a full month. So here, uh, what we couldn't do before that now we can do in the Vision 32 is not those because they were there for, for a long time, but it's the ability to cancel them, not only to cancel one, but you have the option now to either cancel only one of them, to cancel only the future ones, or to cancel an actual range of those. So if by mistake you actually created them for 3,000 years, you don't have to go in every week of that 3,000 years to delete them if you need so. You'll be able to do it directly from the cancel option from that uh, multiple appointment occurrence. Also, uh, just to let you know, uh, popular demand uh, was requested that we added the cell phone field into the uh, wedding list for the one that uses it. So before we had the home phone, we had the work, but now we added also the cell phones. So you can call your patient directly from here to see which one will replace our uh, no-show or cancellation. So that's it for the agenda. Now, going to our patient file, there's a lot going on here also. So you, the more um, persistent ones might have seen that I went, in, went into that uh, patient file there is a new field called pronunciation. So if you want to specify pronunciation, because some patients have a name pronunciation that they prefer, where it's not uh, maybe something that we will actually call them at first, so you're always going to be able to use it. Or a patient that just want to be called John, even if their name is not John at all, you'll be able to put it in the pronunciation. So I know that some people were using brackets sometimes to identify the name they wanted to use, uh, but now you'll be able to have a specific deal for it, so it won't interfere with all your METSIS, uh, your, your provincial claims and uh, maneuvers and offices. Um, also, in the uh, primary contact, now we can set up uh, just by uh, typing the name of the patient. So if I want to change my primary contact, I can just remove it and type in something else. And then the list of patients that answer to those criteria will show up, uh, even if the uh, field was empty. We're also going to have in the insurance uh, insurer tab, sorry, a big note box that was not there before. So all for your TELUS, but also for your uh, current uh, uh, insurance information, because as you know, you're not limited to put your TELUS information there. You could also add your Blue Cross information, your Green Shield, your Internet Affairs information if you wanted to. Uh, it's just that it won't be used for TELUS, obviously, but you can still record that information here, and you'll have those big notebox. So if you want to identify uh, the information about the primary owner that might not be a patient in your file, you know, stuff like that, you'll be able to put it in that big box along with that little nice calendar that we always allow you to use in our notebox in offices. Now, also, we do have uh, yes. a couple questions going Please. on here. <laughs> um, can you SMS from the waiting list? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think so right now, but that's actually going to take note of because that's a very, very good idea to actually be able to SMS directly from here. So let's see. Let's and, put and that this down. Is from, uh, this was from Mark Ritter. So hi, Mark. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, Mark which is our so got, representative got, in Ontario. We got a couple more questions here. Uh, will pronunciation be able to be chosen as the name in an email address field? Absolutely. Since the email address fields are completely customizable because you do your own templates, it will you'll be able to choose pronunciation from your selections. Absolutely. Sounds good. And that's it for so far. Perfect. Two very good questions. Uh, uh, the other one that I want to show you in the patient file, which is also a very nice add-on that we added to the uh, new version, is the fact that we've put now the note. So we remember on our uh, appointments, we have that little note at the bottom in that gray box uh, that we can put a new thing uh, regarding the patient being late, the patient being wheelchair, uh, the patient being dilation, or sometimes you use it for identifying who's taking the appointment. Well, in the patient file, 
now in the grid or the history of all the appointments, you'll be able to see those notes if they had one. So that's going to be a little add-on so you don't have to search for the appointment to see those notes if they're important for you. Then there is the Rx tab. So there is a bit going on in the Rx. Um, uh, the first one in here is that we'll be able to um, see from the printout a new option. So whatever we're in the optometrist Rx, so you know the optometrist Rx is the one that doesn't have the uh, possibility of adding products. So you only have the actual powers, the prism, the PDs, the VAs, but it's not for dispensing purposes, it's just to print out the Rx. So that's what we call the pristine Rx in a way. Uh, we'll be able to print out the Rx either as usual with two Rx's on one paper in that landscape mode that you all know about, or da -da -dum, this single copy. So the single copy will allow you to print one Rx per page. So some of you actually asked that because they didn't see the value of putting two in the same paper. So we added that option for you. So you can print one eight by 11 paper with only one Rx on it. And of course, if you had a uh, dispensing, you'll be able to do the same thing uh, from this double or the single. So double is by pressing as usual on the Rx pinnacle or whatever you want. You're gonna do it as usual. So you don't click more buttons than before. But if you want to go single copy, just click on the single copy option. So that's a little nice add-on that we added here. If we go now into a spectacle RX, so now I'm talking about the one that allow us to dispense a patient. We also have a nice little reader RX conversion. So I make sure that you already um, assume what it does. So when I click on it, it just transfers or add the addition into our sphere. So if you click again on it, it will revert as it was before. So if you want to be able to actually do that calculation uh, automatically, just click on that little button here beside the um, copy ODTOS and the uh, import uh, final RX button. So we put it here like all the other buttons to uh, do that little calculation for you. So you don't have to think about it. Um, so that's a, the one. There's also another one. So what we're going to add a spectacle. So remember, we always have the options to start with the Rx of the previous Rx, with their lenses, with their frame information for BOF, or um, patient on frame. But also we added in version 42, the include lab order notes. So some of you wanted to be able to do that. It wasn't doing it before. And some of you didn't want it to do it. So that's why we gave you the option of doing it or not. So if you want to import the lab order note for a previous lab order, like uh, you want to do a warranty or a redo, you will be able to do it now. So that's going to be just easier instead of doing that copy paste function. Um, in that optometrist RX, which is the one that doesn't have uh, dispensing, just know that we also added the use. So it wasn't there before. And you you ask us, well, why is it not there? Uh, I want to be able to do multi pairs, um, RX at least, uh, from that one. So yes, you'll be able to now define computer safety readers from that list like you did in the spectacle RX. And we added an internal note. So from the exam, so the one actually have internal notes transferred from the exam into that, it will transfer over, uh, unlike what it does before. Did before. Excellent. Uh, now I will talk about all those little miscellaneous. So I, uh, I'll try to go a bit slowly because I'll go pretty much all over the place to show one thing there and one thing there. So please stay focused. So the first one I wanted to show you, it's in the task. So in the task, we uh, recreated the colors uh, function that we had into your task list that you all have personally. So you know that in your task list, the, the, the red ones are due. The green one will be the one that hired you today, and the future one will always be in green. So they have a little view of what you've been missing, of what you forgot to do. But now we also implemented those same colors into the task tab. So you'll be able to see which one are either due today or in the future, or that we forgot to do in the past. <laughs> like I have a lot now. Um, now, in the admin default values. So you know, this is something that you might not go very often, not anymore, uh, if you actually didn't get installed last year or so, uh, but it's still very 
uh, important to actually maybe sometime go back in it and optimize Optisys to what we do because there's a lot of options there that you might forgot that exist. Um, so under admin, application, and default values, um, now we'll be able to actually uh, select that contact lens uh, contraindication. So uh, either going in your company, if you have multiple companies, or staying in the application if you only have one, you'll be able to go under the patient one tab. And then you'll be able to specify if you want to remove the contraindication contact lens note. So that note uh, was there by default on every patient that Rx that we're giving out. So you, you might not see it anymore, but it was always there just in, uh, before the signature of the doctor. So uh, if you want to remove it, just uncheck it. And the same thing for the VAs. So you ask us to be able to remove the visual acuities from the Rx, and now you'll be able to uncheck it. And now it's going to be removed from all your Rx printout. Any questions, uh, Mark? No questions so far. We've got one question uh, on another subject. Um, and the question is, can we get example exam forms that other ODs use and letter templates to see if it's something they could also use? Absolutely. So uh, yes, uh, call us at the support or send us an email and we're more than happy to start the project with you. Of course, a project, as some of you know already, uh, is not only starting with the exam and uh, letters, it's the whole process in the clinic. But yes, we'll be able to assist you in that whole project thing together and show you the templates that we have. And we have a lot now. Nice question. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I, like I was saying, in the uh, I'm still in the admin application and default values. In the default values, under the exam tab here, we have a lot of tabs, I know, but under the exam tab, we'll have new values. And that's going to be very nice, mostly for doctors and pretesters, because now we'll be able to define a not only a default exam, but also a start option. So remember before, you always had to either select default values or select previous exam if you're already using default uh, previous exam information to start your new ones. So, um, and sometimes you forgot uh, because it's always something that we need to do. So now it will default to something that you want. So if you prefer to start with default values or with the um, information of previous exam, go into your uh, default values under the exam tab and set it up the way you want to. So then nobody will forget to do it about it. Of course, we'll still be able to modify it. The default values will be there so people doesn't forget to do it. Uh, also for the one um, importing products. So, you know, of course, we have partnership with Essilor, Hoya, Nikon, and very soon Zeiss for the lens catalog uh, here that you'll be able to download. And of course, we also have frames that now you'll also be able to download uh, if you register to the online catalog that will come up somewhere in Q2 2000. Uh, very, very soon. And when you're going to download those products, because sometimes there's a long, long list, at the bottom where you see the gray bar, you'll have a progress bar so you'll know for how long it will download. So it will take 10 minutes, or it will take 20 minutes, 25 minutes. You'll be able to see it from here if it's going to download quickly, uh, depending on the number of products that you're downloading. So that's a little add on that we added just to make sure you can see if you can go and take a coffee or you have to stay for a computer. Very good. Um, and the last one that I wanted to show you, which is something that uh, most of you requested, uh, is for follow-up procedures. If you have a canceled um, order, lab order, you cannot modify the products in them anymore. You'll still be able to modify the notes and everything uh, and, and something like that, but uh, the follow-ups, but not the products themselves. Because normally if you cancel the order, uh, you're, you're not going to modify it and send it again. So that's why we blocked it, because there's certain reports and selections that were um, modified by mistake by changing that. And also, uh, just for your own information, but also just so you can actually tell maybe your patient also, every time you send a communication from Optisys, the full text will be a bit bigger than before. So some people complain that the text was too small on a phone or on a tablet. So now it's going to be a little bit bigger. So everybody, uh, even if they don't have a perfect visual acuity, can actually take a look at them. So that was pretty much my presentation of the V42. So keep in mind, the biggest one are, of course, the SMS. 
So from anywhere in OpenSys, we can now send SMS if you, of course, register with that Twilio third-party uh, provider. And also for the one who actually use the EMR, those exam buttons will be very nice for you to shave those maybe five or 10 seconds every time you do a letter, a copy, an export. Um, so that's going to make it a lot easier to use your exam on an everyday basis. There's also the uh, progress bar, right, in the catalog updates? Yes. Absolutely. Um, Mark? Yep. Did you want to show that you could minimize that while you keep on working? Well, yes, absolutely. So the 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 best example is I that's what I did. <laughs> so so here when I uh, I was in the catalog, even if I'm not I'm downloading something or I'm not, I'll be able to minimize it and still work in offices. Absolutely. So while I'm in, instead of getting coffee, I can work in offices if I wanted to. Very good. Any questions in the uh, forum, Mark? Um, let's see. So we do have one question here. Is there an online catalog for contact lenses? Ooh, some of you see it in the future. So we're actually developing that uh, right now. So we have, I've seen the, the, the picture about well, the beta version of it. So yes, so we'll be able to, uh, for now, for uh, Cooper, uh, we have a great partnership with them, and the other one will come very, very shortly to actually be able not only to have a catalog from those contact lenses, but also to be able to send it by B2B. So not only you'll be able to send your claims, but you'll also be able to, just like what you can do on the B2B website for those suppliers, be able to send those uh, orders directly to the patient's address that you have in offices, so you don't have to retype it again and again. But let's keep that for another webinar, please. <laughs> Any other questions, Mark? Perfect. So we've got, are the abnormal values like the IOP already preset or do we have to set it ourselves? Uh, that's a good question. So of course you have to set it yourself because abnormal values is something uh, that might be different from different um, users of Opsys. So if I'm going back in my design, um, instead of showing you how it works, uh, how it looks like on the exam, I'll show you how to set it up. So if I go to my telemetry values here, or I should say my design, I'll show it to you. It's very easy to configure. So of course, like I, I repeat myself, they only work with numerical fields. So either integer or float where we have only numbers. And you'll be able to set your normal minimum and your normal maximum here on the side for every field. So yes, you, you would have to do that for every field that you wanted. Um, by the way, the minimum value and the maximum value were always there before. So if you want to, uh, if you think that your pressure is between one and 30, but if they're over 30 uh, and you put like say 35, then it won't even save the exam. So we'll say there is an error, um, but it, the minimum and maximum value will just change the actual um, component to red with the, the contour and the, the numbers themselves. So that's in the design under content, normal min and uh, normal max. And then you can do the same for every field if you wanted to, and then your exam will react accordingly. All right. Um, so we got another question here. When will you be accepting clients to set up store and Optisys? Uh, well, <laughs> we already have something uh, in the works at the moment, which is very, very, uh, well, it's been in beta for a while, which is very good now. It's actually very stable, and we'll call it the e-store. So the e-store allow the, the, the patient to look at your uh, frame inventory. But of course, before that, you need to, um, we need to be able to download the um, catalog from all the frame suppliers. Uh, we have them already, most of them, so all the ones from Aspects, of Luxotica, Westcan, we're still waiting on Cephilo. So it's something that will come very shortly, allowing the patient to see your frame. For now, there's no uh, purchase option. The only option is to either uh, put them, to send it to you by email, or send it to themselves, I should say, to, uh, by email, or to uh, book an appointment to take a look at those frames. But there is no purchase option at the moment. Uh, because the goal is not to compete with the uh, online vendors. Any other questions? All right. So we got um, 
can you show us how to enter contacts? Also, do we need to enter all the parameters? So that's a very good question. And before I dwell into the details, uh, I, if you want to enter all the parameters and everything, which is well, pretty much insane at the moment as we speak, uh, because we need to enter all the parameters one by one. So I would wait just a little, just give us about two, three months at maximum to come up with that contact lens catalog. And then you'll be able to download those vibrators, which is a game changer for everyone, I think. But for the moment, if you just want to enter some products, you can actually go into products, um, contact lenses, and in here. And once you have your suppliers and your brand created, which is very important, by the way, it's uh, mandatory, and then you'll be able to create your product using the new icon. And then you can create not only your products, but also your packages, like your six months of AQP2, your um, three boxes and packages and so forth, given the, the, um, the price and everything that uh, they, they would need for. So the cost formula and the details. So the details here, I suggest to remove it so you don't have to create all the little uh, uh, combination of every sphere, cylinder, access possible in the world, which is tremendous. So just keep it without the uh, details and then you'll be still be able to sell them and put them in your lab orders. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, another question here, um, how to remove the number so that all medications are alphabetical and not in groups that came with the program without having to re-enter all the medications again? That's a very good question. So this is a matter of priority. So um, going in the exam, and that's actually good for everyone who uses the exam in autosys. Uh, we have what we call the personalized list, which is where we're going to store all the lists, all the drop downs, and all the selection box that we have in the exam, or that have been in one exam or a letter or whatever. And uh, from here, if I go to medication, I'll use the same um, options that uh, we have in the question. And then going into the data, so there's two tabs at the top, so then called type and one C data, uh, then we'll have the options. Of course, we also have to work with priorities. So if you want to put medication on the top that you actually have a lot and you don't want to search for it every time, you can always put that specific medication on higher priority. So then it, will, it won't uh, react alph alphabetically like you're supposed to. It will just be on top of the list if you actually put one as in this example. However, if you have some drugs that are at priority number five and maybe some others there are 20 well of course the five will have priority over the 20s so all the 20s will be uh put at the end whatever their alphabetical order might be so that's maybe why you want to change them so if you have some like as in this case that doesn't have the same priority number you'll just have to go into modification and change the number accordingly depending on which one you have the most and then all Every, once everything will be uh, priority with the same priority, so number five in that example, well, then they'll all be perfectly alphabetical. And by the way, if you have 500 of them that you have to change your priority, just call us. Uh, we have some tools to allow you to do that. Any other questions? Perfect. So, um, so uh, that was it for the questions I have. Okay, very good. So now the way it works uh, for the uh, qu uh, period of question, I'll ask you to raise your hand. Mark will then unmute you so you can actually ask your question. So we're gonna try to go by order uh, and uh, have the first one who had their hand raised to ask their questions. Please keep your question as close as possible to the version 32 um, because uh, it might not impact everyone, please. Okay, so we have uh, we have a couple questions here. We have uh, one question here, and I will uh, unmute and go ahead. Yes. Do we have a question? Uh, Mark, who have we unmute? Uh, Barry Burns. Dr. Burns. Oh, sorry with that. I, I must have hit the wrong button. I asked the question, I typed it in. Okay. Wonderful. Very good, thank you. Uh, anybody with their hand raised, Mark? All right, so I have uh, Dr. Fred Campbell here. 
Hey, Dr. Campbell, how are you? Dr. Campbell? Again, this might might, might have been a, an, a pressed by accident the uh, phrase hand. Um, okay, um, then we have uh, Jacqueline John here. Yes, Jacqueline, how can I help you? Jacqueline, you're unmuted, so you still should be able to talk. If not, please just ask a question in the question area, and we'll be uh, more than happy to answer no problem. it. No problem. All right, so let's try somebody else here. We've got a couple uh, raised hands. We have uh, Sheila Johnson here. Um, hi, Sheila. How are, hi, you? Eric. Hi, Sheila. How are you? Good, very, thanks. Yourself? Very good. Uh, regarding very good. contacts. Um, to sell the contacts, is the prescription attached? Uh, well, yeah. not really. So yeah. in a really. way, when you create yeah. your uh, your order for the contact lenses, so going into the Rx section where you would have your contact lens area, when you click on the invoice, it just invoice whatever we have and the unit price and quantities in here. That's whatever it's going to invoice. It's not attached to what you call the RX or the detail of it at the moment. But once again, just be a bit patient, Sheila, and we'll have a list, a catalog of contact lenses you'll be able to download. And all the uh, RX is available with diameters and the, um, and the base curve will be included in that definition. So not only you'll have it attached then, like you said, but also you're gonna verify that such and such, such brand are available in a specific base curve or diameters. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, is there something All else? right. So let's see. Do we have any more raised hands? Um, again, uh, for those who weren't able to speak, I, I will contact you to make sure we didn't leave any uh, questions unanswered here. Um, oh, um, and I, I think that's it for now. Perfect. Excellent. So I hope that you all get a very good idea of all the powers and the features of uh, that uh, version 32 uh, of Optisys. Uh, like I said, wait for it maybe next week to uh, go in Optisys and download it. There's a tip in the trips and tricks and also in the email we sent you, there's the uh, how to do the update yourself. Uh, we do recommend, uh, however, that you do it directly on the server, which is always, well, just faster, plainly faster and more stable and uh, then you'll be able to benefit from all those nice features. So don't forget, for the SMS, you can right away go on the Twilio.com website to register yourself, uh, put some money in your account, get your credentials, follow the videos to set up an Optisys, and then once you'll have the 42, you'll be ready to go and send those SMS to your patients. Uh, communication with your patients nowadays is the key, I think. So uh, we'll, we'll try to allow you to do your, the best out of it. So any more questions, Mark, just before we, we go? Um, we've got one question here. Can you put a patient pharmacy in the system? A pharmacy information. Uh, um, oh, OK. Uh, I guess not. Uh, well, yes. Well, yes and no. So of course, there's always the notes. So you want to specify into the um, internal notes which pharmacy they're dealing with. You can always do it. However, for the one who's using the EMR, the exam, that's something we can also add in the exam itself. This is something that we ask for the patient every time. Um, but yeah, maybe I could keep that in notes, just like to say pharmacy, uh, whatever corner of that street, if that's something we can. But there's no specific field that's saying you know, this is for that right now. But that's a good option. I'll, I'll take in that, in the, I'm noting that right now. Any other questions in oh, the forum? Good. Oh, we've got one more here. Oh, uh, can you send an RX to different printers than the one from the RX section? Um, well, actually, there is um, a setup that we can do in Optisys, uh, but it's only for the one that have an RX uh, that you print out from the action buttons here on the top, so the uh, printer shortcuts. So if you have predefined your RX yourself, so it's, you're not using the system RX, yes, you can specify in the um, default values which 
printer it goes to, even if it's not your default printer. However, the other ones that we're going to do here will always be printed on the default value, like we do for all the reports. So if you have default printers, it, that's where you're going to go to. So you can either change your default printer, or you can actually set your um, set cuts to print a personalized RX. At that moment, if it's not something that's there, if it's not something you're not using it, you can always call us and we'll be more than happy to show you how to create such an RX. Uh, you might already have one, but you don't know. <laughs> and also uh, where to set up the printers. Very good. Any other questions, Mark? In the okay, so we got, can the exam print RX button go to a printer in the exam room? Absolutely. So this will go to the uh, default printer. So if on the, your exam computer, normally, uh, logically, the default printer, which always should be the printer that's the closest to the computer, because that's only where we're going to print stuff anyway, like reports and letters and so forth. So yes, so as long as the uh, printer for the RX is the default printer for the letter, that's where it's going to go to. So we don't have to define something specific. Okay, and to answer the last question, yes, it's the exam form button. The exam form button will will print uh, signed RX uh, regardless of what printer is uh, defined. So it could be the printer in the exam room or or any other printer in the office. Okay. All right, so um, I think that's all the questions. Perfect. Very good. I think we've done a good tour of that uh, Optus's version 32. So uh, go ahead, uh, let yourself loose with the, the SMS. Uh, good luck, everyone. Stay safe. Uh, very important. And of course, just know that our support team is still there during that period to answer your questions. If you have any project that you've put on the stove for some time and you want to go ahead with it, don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be ready to uh, help you. We take notes on everything we've done. Don't forget that we recorded that uh, seminar for you to share it with other people later on or just to review it yourself if you wanted to have all the little details out of it. So thanks a lot for your time, for your very big attendance, and hopefully we'll talk to each other very soon. Thank you, and once again, stay safe.